last video, we learned about the Document Object Model, or DOM. In this video, we're going to interact with it in our browser. In this video, we'll be using this very simple HTML file to experiment with the DOM. Now, I have my document loaded up in my web page right here, and I'm going to open up my developer's tools. Now, we can use any developer tool like Firebug or the developer tools that come in Chrome or Safari. To learn how to use the wide variety of different tools, check out our chapter on web tools. For now, to follow along in Google Chrome, click View, Developer, JavaScript Console, and you'll get a console like this on the bottom. I'm going to zoom in to make the text a little bit larger, but just take note of the layout of our page. We have an H1, a paragraph with some text with strong tags in it, and we'll be exploring this document tree. Now the variable called document in our web browser provides us access to our document tree. You may already be familiar with the document variable if you've used a method called document.getElementById, a method that allows us to easily retrieve nodes given an ID. We'll look at this method a little bit more later. The document represents the root of our document tree. It itself has no parent node, and it isn't represented by any particular tag in HTML but rather it represents the whole document. In fact, if we were to look at its child nodes, we would see that it normally has two child nodes. First, a node representing our doc type declaration, if we've declared one, and a second child, the HTML tag. Now we're actually going to inspect our document using our developer's tools. So to do this, we're going to just type in document, and we'll hit enter. Now, right now, Chrome is providing me with a pretty nice representation of the document, which actually folds out here, and we can actually see the doc type HTML and our HTML node. Now, this representation doesn't really give us a great idea of the actual structure of the object we call document, but we can actually call methods on it to get a little more information. For instance, if we wanted to access the child nodes, on any given DOM node, like the document or any of those child nodes, we can use an attribute called child nodes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to type document, and I'm going to call its attribute called child nodes. When we get that, we can see that it returns us a list or an array containing two items, the first item being the doc type and the second item being the HTML. So since we can address it like a normal array, if we were to say, use square brackets and grab index one, being the second element, we see we get returned the node for the HTML tag. Now, if we continue on that, and we now have child nodes one being our HTML tag, and we call child nodes on that, we can see that we get a head and a body. And in between, you can actually see an empty class here. And what this represents is the space in our document between the head and the body tags meaning that this is a simple text node. So if we take a look at our source code here, we can see that between my head and my body, there is two spaces and a new line. So that is an actual node, even though it doesn't really have any content or meaning. This is something that's easy to get tripped up on, but you need to be able to account for white space text nodes when navigating your tree. So for instance, let's say I go back here and I cut out all the space between head and body. Let's see what it looks like now. So I'm going to refresh the page, and I'm going to get the document.childnodes1 to get our HTML, and I'm gonna call child nodes on that. And now you can see there's only two elements, our head and our body. So depending on how you format your HTML document, you may get different results compared to what you're used to. Now I switched it back, and if I were to grab element two, we're getting the body, we can call child nodes on that and see that there's some text and h1 some more text and a paragraph and so if i were to grab index one do child nodes well we can see the contents of our h1 tag including text and an emphasis tag and more text now we can notice how repetitive that got and that's because whether it's a document node or an html tag node or a body node, they're all just nodes in the tree, and they share the same interface. This is powerful because once you know the basics of the DOM nodes, you can pretty much apply your knowledge to any node. So we've seen how to go down, but let's take a look at how we might go up. 
to get an idea of how the tree works. So let's go ahead and take this section right here. I'm going to copy this, paste it, and we see it's our h1 tag. Now, to make this easier, I'm just going to call this a variable called h1, and now our h1 is that node. Now, if I wanted to find the parent of that element, since each node has one parent node, we could do something like h1.parentNode, and we'll see that that returns us the body node. If we take the parent node of the body, you can see we're now going up to the HTML element. And if we were to take the parent node of that, we get the actual document node. Now, since the document node is the top of our tree, if we were to call parent node on that one more time, we see that it's null because you can't go any higher than the root of our tree. Now, the document object also has a couple other shortcuts. For instance, document dot document element which will return our HTML element, which is the actual top of our HTML defined document, as well as document.body, which is a nice shortcut down to the body node. And now we know how to use child nodes and parent elements to traverse our tree. In the next video, we'll look at some methods that allow us to search for nodes quickly. Mm -hmm.